Okay, welcome everyone to our class. Um, we are um, investigating Meitav Sadeo Meitav Karmi Shalom. This rule in the Torah, Halach actually, uh, and I would say better, it's a mitzvah. Okay, Kodesh Baruch says to us, when uh, you damage someone's property, you have to pay with the best of your land. Now, we've been investigating the details of what does it mean paying with the best of your land. And uh, we've come to a, a place in our investigation where, let me just get a little chart, we have so many little, nice little charts here. Okay. Um, oops, that's not a good one. Let's see, I call it the argument flow. Okay, uh, um, a place where we have an we have three elements that the Torah has defined as admissible uh, methods of paying for damage. One pasuk said mate of sedehu, and the other pasuk said kesev, and through a rebu of Yashiv we have shavik kesev. So we have our three elements: there's there's uh, mate of sedehu, kesev, and metaltal. When we got as far as the Rishonim, so we saw that the Rush uh, held, as far as Reb Papa was concerned, that all three elements were equal, and Rabbeinu Tam held like Rev Huna that Kesib and Metav are the first um, uh, method to pay back, and only if you don't have Kesev and Metav to use Metavlin. And that was our worldview, and the, and the Rosh said the halacha is like the Rif, who holds that all three elements are equal, which is the sheet of Reb Papa. When it came to the Nuki Yosef, who is also a Rishon, but a, a late Rishon, um, uh, I'm going to send you my updates all the time, uh, but um, he's a late Rishon. Uh, he brings us the Rama and the Rambam, and they have they disagree and they have a hierarchical relationship that comes to Kesev. The Rama we said, had a, a three-level hierarchical um, uh, system, which means if you have money, you have to pay it, and only if you don't have money can you use metaltalin or karka, and if you have metaltalin or karka, you have to do metaltalin. If you have, uh, of course, you don't have uh, Kesev or metaltalin, that's then and only then do you use uh, metav karka. So we had a three-level hierarchy, and the Rambam, uh, according to the Nebuchadnezzar Yosef, had a two-level hierarchy, which means you can give equally Kesev or Metav, and only if you don't have Kesev and Metav do you give Metaltalin. So the, really this Ramah is, is the first indication that we have that Metav Karka is the worst payback. Okay, in other words, the, the, the court or the Niza can, can say to you, if you have Kesev or Metalfon, you must give it. Um, and he says that that's the Shittas of the Roma and the Rambam. Okay. Um, when it came to the Halacha, so we had a new level of um, understanding, which was the Tur, who's the son of the Rush, writes that you give uh, uh, Kesev back. He doesn't say anything about the base thing, but he says, I'm sorry, he says you give Metaltalin and um, Kesev, excuse me, Metaltalin and Kesev, and then if you don't have them, then you can you give uh, Karka. Now, that uh, writing was under scrutiny. The Beis Yosef held that that's the shita of uh, the tour has a new shita. He doesn't mention, as we said, he doesn't mention Ram, but he says that Karka, uh, mate of Karka, is the worst payback. Uh, in other words, you have Kesev and Shavik Kesev, uh, what can be demanded by the Nizak, and and uh, Karka could be rejected by him as a payment. Um, and that was Beis Yosef, and the the this Levush Yeshushan said that is the Rambam. Okay, it's not only the Beis Yosef just told us that's the tour, and he learned. Remember, we're going to get get involved more in that, but he learned that's an analogy 
to Balchov. And Balchov says the Beis Yosef, the tour holds, unlike his father, that you must pay back money first, if you have it. Money is supreme. Okay, of course the Rush said money and Metaltron are equal, but uh, the Beis Yosef says the tour disagrees. Then we had, we said the, what we called the, uh, just, you know, rhetorically, we said this the, the old world view, that the tour is saying nothing new, and he's really sticking with the Rush that all three things are equal. When it came to the Shulchan Aruch, we had the same machlokis. The, whether the Shulchan Aruch, who quotes practically word by word of the Rambam, uh, is he understanding the Rambam like the like the rush, which means all three elements are equal, or no. So there we had the Sma that says, look, he's just reading, he's understanding the, the Ramam, like I said. But in order to do that, the Sma had to say, well, really, you can give any one of the three. And the reason why it's written that you you you, you take Metaltalin first is only because Masik is not around. And the base then figures out what the Mazik would have given. But really, Me'ikra didn't. If the Mazik was here, he could give any one of the three equally. But since he's not here, and the Bastin, it says, because the Lushan is Kesha Bastin, the Skok, and when the Bastin has to figure out what to give, why does the Bastin have to figure out what to give? Because the Mazik's not around. So then it uh, it says, well, usually a Mazik would rather give his Metaltum before his Karkin. That's the Din. That's how the Sma answers. And we're in the Shah who's going to disagree with the Sma and uh, say that really the Rambam and the Tur and the Shulchan Aruch are all in a new world where Metaltalin and where Kesem Metaltalin is the first um, demand that the based in um, commands the Mazik to pay back with. And only if the Mazik doesn't have Metaltalin or Kesev do we allow Metav Karka. So that is uh, what's at stake here. What's at stake here really, if I could say it in, in one brief line, is Metav Karka equal to Kesev and Metaltalin or is it less than Kesev and Metaltalin? That's what's being debated here. Uh, now, Shach has taken the position that it's less, right? Correct. Correct. The Shach is now going to write his brief, <laughs> so to speak. He's going to write his argument, and he's going to do exactly the system that we were speaking about before, which was. Uh, before the class out, uh, which was he's going to present the SMA. Okay, and then he's going to um, point by point show why the SMA is incorrect. He's going to bring the other alternative and, and show why the SMA is incorrect. Okay, so let me go back to there. Um, there we go. Okay. And it's interesting that the Ramkal calls this method of analysis and debate or an argument in the intellectual sense Derech HaKodesh. Why is he called Derech HaKodesh? Because the Gemara uses that system. So this is not something that we do uh, because, well, we can't figure things out in Bidiyev we have to rely on this. No. It's actually the Derech of the Torah that a person has to be intellectually acute and explain the Mrs. for Kodesh Baruch in all their details and prove that that indeed is the proper explanation. That's and this method is called Derech Kodesh. The Ramchal says, and he's a Kabbalist, <laughs> which is a, which is when we went to Rabbi Brody, uh, all of us showed him he's the Rosh Hashiva. He was a Rosh Hashiva of Hebron, and we showed him Derech Tfunos. So first he didn't understand; he thought it was Das Tfunos, because everyone knows the Ramchal is being involved in the philosophical understanding of, of Torah and uh, the Kabbalistic understanding of Torah. So when he saw the, you know, we, we wrote a, uh, a, a, a letter of um, 
explanation, the letter said that the Ramchal teaches you how to learn. So he said, you can't say that. Sure. The Ramchal teaches you about the philosophical understanding and depth of understanding of all the Torah that you can say, or the Kabbalistic, but what, what do you mean, how do you learn Torah? So we showed him the, the Sefer, Derek Tfunos, and he said, well, let me, let me read it. I, he, never, he never read the book, because it's like a little small book that's in the shelf somewhere, and you know, you know, who really gets to it? There's big things to do here in the world, you know. <laughs> when, he, when he came back, he said, wow, this is amazing. He said, when, I, when, when you look at a, um, when, when kids learn how to read, so there's two shito, two methods of teaching a child how to read. One is the standard, um, one is, excuse me, one is the new, what we call nowadays the new shita, which is really you show them a whole word, word and you say that's called Abba, and you repeat it, and you look at those symbols, Abba, and then you look at the next word, you tell them that, right? Uh, and But the other way of learning is you break each word down to its letters, and each letter has a sound, and you have him build it up from the beginning. He said that when I learned, it was in the second way. In other words, I read the Gemara, and uh, from reading the Gemara, I picked up what the system was. But what the Ramchal is doing here is the other method, which is breaking everything down into the basic components and building them up, which was very, very insightful. Okay, he was a great Rosh Hashiva. Uh, and that's really what the Ramchal has done. He's breaking, br broken down the process of argumentation into its basic um, principles and then explain to us how this, the system works. Then, of course, the, 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 you need, what's the difference between a person who just gets out of school and a person who's had the experience of, of doing any profession? That experience is how do you apply these abstract rules to the reality? Okay, so a kid just gets out of school and he, well, he read all the books, but there's a lot going on in between, okay, like we just said and in, in, in mentioned before, you know, there's, there, there's what is written, but there's what does it mean, and then what is exactly the application to the, to the real world situations. That type of integration of all the material is really what a, what, what, what a, what a, what a Rav is supposed to be. He's supposed to understand all of that, which means all the the uh, the what what all the written information, and then he has to apply that to the case in front of him, and uh, apply it with wisdom. So you'll always hear that the uh, you know that uh, one the famous thing someone comes into the rabbi and says uh, you know, uh, his side of the case. The rabbi says, "Oh yeah, you're right." And the other person comes in and says, "Well, you're right." So his, the Rebbitzin says, wait a minute, how could you tell that A is right and B is right? They're arguing. He says, you're right also. <laughs> but uh, the analysis here, well, that's a joke, but the analysis means that, that there are always sides to any debatable issue or else they wouldn't be asking for a decision. Uh, and we're not talking about the simple thing, whether people are telling the truth or not. Okay, that's, that's the basic thing. But even if both people are telling the truth, there are... Uh, different sides being presented, and you, the, the rabbi has to then machria, which is very, very difficult. So that's what's happening here. So the first thing we have here uh, in this interesting problem, the interesting problem is, again, if we can just uh, make our brief statement of um, aim here, is whether metav karka is equal to the to, to kesev and talton, or whether it's less. So the Shach's presentation, which is what we're interested in here, and that's why I, I, you know, when you read it on the side, is one whole, you know, one column. So again, um, if you have a tremendous mind, and you're trained, so you see exactly what you're seeing here physically on the page, but since people don't have have that and are not aware of the depth of this, the Shach's presentation by doing this outlining, which is not taking changing any of his words, but just presenting how he writes, you can clearly see how extremely formal his presentation is. And it's not only his presentation. Everyone who is in this world has a very formal way of presentation. They always present 
uh, their issues, they show the why the other side is incorrect, and they have to prove their side. That's the basic system of, of uh, all the Torah that we're dealing with. Um, so here's the shach. The shach first tells us what is, if I had to, you know, what is your statement of uh, uh, what's your aim? So the aim is to explain this part of the Shulchan Aruch, by the way, that says, Govin mi hametad l'ntechila. That's really what he wants to explain. And which means that Metaltlin has a precedent over Metav. I said it the opposite way that, that Metav carcass is on the bottom, but it doesn't mean it just means it's the same, you know thing that but here but here uh Metaltlin has a preference over Metav Karka. What is the other side? That Metaltlin has no preference over Metav Karka. That's really the issue here. So it's the position of the Shulchan Aruch that Metaltalin has a precedent over Metav Karka. The question is, what did the Shulchan Aruch mean? So the Sma explains that um, it's talking about the case, and I underlined it here just for brevity because we have to go forward, that the Mazak is not around, and we, the based in, uh, have to decide what the mazik would have given. And since uh, a mazik normally would give metaltalin over karka, that's why the bastin uh, must give metaltalin before karka when the mazik is not around. But mikradin, which means if the mazik was here, then the yad mazik is alyona and he could decide what he wants to give. Right? And uh, the Sma ends with this very important phrase, of course, which is the phrase of the Rush, those that know him, that Nezikin is not comparable to Malva. Okay, because in the case of Malva, we know that the, the Malva, the one who loaned the money, has a right to demand of the Nizak, Kesev, and Metaphon here, before Karka. Okay, so that's what this, the Sma does. He takes the words of the Shulchan Aruch and he says there, it's called an Okimta, he sets it up that we're talking about when the Mazik got around, and therefore that's the only reason why we have a precedent of Metaltalin over Metav, but in a normal case if the Mazik was here, there wouldn't be any. And this is not comparable to Malva. Okay, where there is a precedent of Kesev uh, Metatlan over Karka. Very good. Now, the Sma concludes, he says, my understanding of the Shulchan Aruch goes against what the Beis Yosef said in the tour. Correct? The Beis Yosef said in the tour, not in his own Shulchan Aruch, that the, the tour says that there is a um, precedent of Metatlan over Karka. Okay, and that was unlike the rush. The, the rush said you cannot make this analogy between Malva and Nazikin, and the the tour is doing it according to the Beis Yosef. So when it came to writing the halacha, the Sma says that the Yosef the Yosef Cairo did not follow the sheet of the tour. Went back to the sheet of the rush that the Mazik can give all three. Ah, why did he write it this way? Because the Mazik's not around. And the Yeshushan, another comment, also agreed with the Beis Yosef when it came to the tour, and that's where the Sma ended it. Now, uh, another, this is like, you know, pretty sophisticated stuff, but basically here, if you look at this, do you see this little chart? Okay, it's, I don't want to make it again. My, my idea is to simplify, not to make things complicated. But, you know, what they say everything is simple to the simple. Uh, but basically here, uh, in the Rambam, and of course, that'll spill into the Shulchan Aruch because we have to know if the Shulchan Aruch is finding. We said the Shulchan Aruch, as far as his words are concerned, copies almost word for word from the Rambam, just saying a few little words. Uh, so now we're going to have to understand: Did the Rambam himself, when he wrote his halacha, give a precedent or to Metaltal and Overkark or not? That's really the, the the issue here too. So people will say in the Rambam, when we go back to the Rambam, who's the source. Uh, there will also be that argument. Does the Rambam say, no, Metatlan is given before Karko or not? 
and that will be the debate and the, the discussion, the argument over here. But the the um, Beis Yosef explain to us why you would give a precedent over Kesem and Metalton over Metaf. And that comes to an analogy to Balchov. Okay, if we say the case of Nazikin and Balchov are analogous, and we know that in the case of Balchov, Kesev and Metaltalin are given before Karka, that means the, the, the Malva has a right to say, I want Kesev and Metaltalin if you have it, and I don't want your Karka. Whether that din moves through an analogy, which is a heckish, one of the types of hekation is called analogy, uh, whether it moves into Nazikin or not. So that really is a very critical point. The Rush, remember, said no. The Rush said there's a specific reason why Balchov, you're, or you have a right to the Kesev and its equivalent called Metatholin. That's because you gave money. So anything that's closer to money, you, you have a right to demand. But in a Zikin way, you didn't give money, you just lost money. So that reason doesn't apply. And therefore, the, the Rush held that all of these three elements are equal. Okay? Are you with me on, the, on, on this point? So yes. the, issue, the issue here is whether we can make an analogy to Balchov or not. Okay, if you, you say that ba we can make an analogy from the Zikin to Balchov, well, then you're going to end up with the same din. If not, then you're going to split them off. And that's a very, very critical uh, point of this discussion. Okay, now just to say another point, remember when we first are were presented by the Rambam, the fact that Metav is a second alternative um, really shocked us because the way we were learning, it's either an equal alternative or, or, or if anything, metalton is the worst alternative. Okay, so that was a very big chiddush. So if you're going to say that Peshat in the Rambam is that metal is the worst, and you need proof. So the proof, as we said, is going to come from Balchov, through an analogy through Balchov. Okay, and then you're going to have to reread Agamaras to include that distinction in the Gemaras that we have, i.e., Rav Papa, Rav Huna. Okay, so it's it's a um, interaction, as we mentioned, that's off the page, which means that there's influences to the understanding of the Gemara, which are not there black and white, which are understood. Remember, Torah Shabbat Peh, everything cannot be written down, everything was not written down. There's a, there's an intellectual jump and awareness that you have to have when you're learning. Okay, and actually in life we do it all the time. There's certain contexts that things I would say if, if a person is in a in a steel mill and says and someone says, Yeah, watch out for the pig. So he means pig iron because that's the context that you're in. That's a professional um word, right? Or if you're in a computer and someone says, uh, enter, so you don't say, well, where's the door, right? You hit a button. So uh, to be involved in, in the world of Torah means to be knowledgeable as to the context that any statement is said in. So we always start with what it means is what it says. You know, Hashem put his hand in its rhyme. That's what it says. That's what it means. But we don't end up there necessarily. Okay, and if you, whenever you go against what the words mean, then the burden of proof is on you. Where did you get it from? Okay, so to hear from our, our, our primary understanding of Rev Huna and Rev Papa was that uh, either all three elements are equal or that, if anything, metazolin is worse. If you're now to say that this Gemara is influenced by Balchov, you're going to have to now reread Rev Huna, Rev Papa, or both of them, correct? Okay, with that new 
uh, influence involved. So, that, so this is not just a uh, simple um, analogy here. This simple analogy is going to have repercussions in understanding the text itself. And that's really where we're going to be involved in. Anyone who's going to push into the Rambam, the concept that Metav is uh, less, is now going to have a job to do it. Uh, the Beis Yosef did it in the tour with Balchov. But he, did, he again, he doesn't spell everything out. We're dealing with professional systems, and you're going to have to see deeper. And the people who write on the, explain the base Yosef is going to tell you the deeper view. That's exactly where we're holding our piece. But this is very important to point out that the critical, the critical shift in our understanding is coming by importing information from Balcho, which may making an analogy from Balcho to Nazikan. Now if I could point out one thing here, if you notice this chart, when it comes to Nazikan, we have a din of Metav Karka, correct? That says it says in the Torah you can't get away from that. Right? But when it comes to Balcho, we don't have a din of Metav Karka. So whenever you make an analogy, you have to handle the differences. Certain differences will be, what we say, differences that make a difference, critical differences, which will split off the cases. And certain differences will be um, insignificant differences. Okay? So if I say, you know, we're both religious people and you daven and I daven, that's fine. We can make an analogy. But if I say, well, wait a minute, I have green eyes and you have blue eyes, therefore you can't prove that I should be also. So that we just say, well, that's an insignificant difference. That's a difference that doesn't make them. It is a difference. I mean, we have different colored eyes, but it's not relevant to make a distinction between these two uh, cases, of the analogy here. So we're going to have to see that the reality is the facts of the case are that that the Balchov only pays in Bainanis and the, the Nizak pays in Metab. The question is, is that a significant difference which will split two cases or not? Okay, or is it a minor difference? Okay, and if they are analogy, on what basis are they analogous? Okay, so, and uh, we spoke a little about that also. But that's all part of the understanding of this issue here. Whether we allow Balchov to come in to influence and make an analogy to Nazikin, we're going to be have to handle handle those factors. Okay. So with that, again, rather <laughs> rather short introduction. Um, okay, we're back here. So the what we call the old the old world and the new world view, the SMA is saying that uh, the uh, the tour and the Shulchan Aruch uh, are all standard or old world views, and don't read this text uh, literally, because you start reading the text literally, you're going to have a, a chiddush which cannot uh, be um, supported. So the Shah, he's going to say, well, you missed the point here. And we're not going to support the um, this new world view that absolutely Metatlan has a preference over Karka. That the Mazek must give Metatlan. If he has Metatlan, Karka, he must give Metatlan. And he says that's the Shita of Rambam, Machaber, and also the Yir Shushan, which explained the 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 uh, Rambam. Okay. And it's also the Das of the Tur, he says. And all the other, whoever the Sharp Post Kim are. And he says not only is that their opinion, but that happens to be the Ikars, I will explain. I will show you and I will bring you evidence, proof from the Gemara that the, the reality is with the Rambam that you have a, you must give Metaltalin, uh if you have it before you give your Metav Karka. And that's what he's going to explain. Okay? So, now, here I wrote little green notes for myself because again it would be very nice to um, not only do I outline these things so we can see it, uh, but also we have to analyze each one of his steps. In other words, he brings evidence. Well, what is the source of his evidence? You see, uh, and this, of course, when, when it comes to the, we're only around 1600, so we have another, you know, 400, uh, how much, 600 years to go. So people now will be reading the Shach, 
and analyzing his evidence and then either destroying his evidence or modifying his evidence. That's what the late generation is going to do. So we have to be clear as what he brought as his evidence that the Rambam and the Mechaber and, okay, the, the, and the tour are all holding that there's this precedent of Metathlon of Karka. So his first, we, we, we read uh, before the class uh, an interesting little piece that said when you present an argument, you, could start, you should start with your strongest argument first. Uh, I don't know if that's his system, but I suppose it is. I think the Ram Khal says that also. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure of that. Right. But you always start with your, your best, uh, your best argument. So his first argument comes from the Namuki Yosef, who quotes the Rambam. So Baruch Hashem, we have click and click and and go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, imagine or people had all this on their head, you know. Uh, and this is only one little halacha of thousands of halacha. But I hear it's in the Muki Yosef. So we bring you, we present, the shock is now presenting the Muki Yosef as evidence that the Rambam holds there's a precedent of Metatl and Ovakarka, correct? And here he is. When it comes to the Zikin, says the Muki Yosef, he says, many Mephorshim say, the matzi lit ten lay a filu karka of a filu zuze. Excuse me. The matze lemitan lay a filu karka, the filu hari lay zuze. Uh, there are many before that say even if you have money, you can give karka. Ubilvad shia karka yidis, and that's really what we said is the rush. I mean, as long as you you know, as long as you give yidis, you can give it if you have zuze uh, money. Of course, if you have metatlon, also I suppose the same. Aval, he says. Midira Rambam Zal Nira. Nira, interesting word. What does Nira mean? Ears. He doesn't want to hear. Okay, which means there's room for discussion in the Rambam. That's an important word. Okay, he doesn't say it's obvious. He says Nira. It appears from the way that the Rambam writes. The cave in the Islay Metaltalin, Metaltalin Yehidle. When you have Metaltalin and Karker, you must give Metaltalin. Okay, so the first piece of evidence that the Shach presents to us that the Rambam indeed holds that if you have metaltalin and karka, you must give metaltalin, is from the Namuki Yosef. Okay, and that's a clear piece of evidence. At least we have, in Sodoraya Mitzad Kabbalah, we have a very important authoritative figure who understands the Rambam that way. Okay, so with a little click, little back. So that's a very powerful uh, proof from a very important person. V'chein mitzati, reish perach hamocha. We just read it. Mocha uh, peres shekatov lahedja midivra ramam nira. In the zikin, he is like karka umetaltlen kafinin le lemesav le metal. Oops, I'm sorry. Interesting. Here I'm going to do a little uh, computer magic. These are the words we just read in uh, in the Namuki Yosef, correct? You don't mind if I take it here. Of Amidivra Rambam Nira, the cave in the Isle Metaltalin, Metaltalin Yehivle. If he has Metaltalin, he should give it. Translation of the Shach. I Isle Karka U Metaltalin, Kafinin Le Liten Metaltalin. What does Kafinin mean? We he's, fought. he's bringing the language of the Rambam back in, right? The uh, Niskakin. Yes, but he changes the word. The Rambam says Niskakin. Uh, he all all the Rambam says Govin Meataltal Govin Meataltal and Tachila. That's the lesson of the Rambam. You collect from the Tachila first. The Namuki Yosef on the Rambam explains if you have Meataltal and you give Meataltal, and he. 
the shach just adds that that's a kafia. What does that mean? That we force the mazik to give it. Now that's an important word because remember other people are talking about well if he wants to give it and if he wants this and he wants this you know it's going to be the shock's position that the din who kach ve'eno taliburatsan amazik o anizak that's going to be his position are you are you with me in the differences that I, what I'm bringing up now now these nuances are extremely critical okay because we read before you're allowed to present your case with your understanding but a person in the analysis has to strip away or, or at least define what the Mahaber is is presenting so here the, the original evidence or the original text doesn't say anything about kafia or forcing okay but the shah is understanding that that that's the simple meaning. And the base then is is uh, niskaken. It's govin. It collects from metatlin let lichatchila. Those are the key beginning words. And he says that's a force. We don't ask the mazik what he wants to give, right? Well, what would you like to give mazik? We force him to give if he has metatlin and karka metatlin first. Okay, that's a subtle difference, um, but it's an important thing to note. Okay, so uh, what we just learned here is we always have to go back to the original text and see what it says and what the Mafarish adds. And, and, and then we have to ask ourselves, well, why did he do that and whether it's legitimate to do that? But that's what he did do, okay, in stage one. Okay, very good. Now, so I'm going to put this in gray just to know that we just added that. But you see how serious this is. That's why, it's, although we have another 600 years to go, um, if we're not careful, we, we, we're not going to understand what later people are going to be saying about the text. I and mean, we can come back when they say it. That's important. But if we do it, it's even better. So that's his first proof, and it's a very good proof, at least. The, the, he has a, a, a direct statement, always the best thing is black and white. He has a black and white statement of Namuki Yosef that that sheet is a Rambam, that you give Metatlon before Karka. Now, here's his second proof. He says, V'hachi mash mavadai b'shut divrei harambam. Now, that's called Araya Mitzad Teva. We, what does it mean, Teva? We said that you have, can have Araya Mitzad Kabbalah and Araya Mitzad Teva. Simply, Araya Mitzad Kabbalah means it's true because I have an authoritative source that says that. Okay? Uh, how do we know Hashem created the world? Well, it says so in the Torah. Okay? That's a proof Mitzad Kabbalah. Okay? Other proof, people want to bring a proof Mitzad logic that every every every... Uh, every result has a cause and there has to be a limited amount of causes or else we'd never get to this result. That's what the 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 uh, proof that uh, the Chavos uh, wants to bring. A, a logical proof, okay. But when I appeal to language and I say is that was a language mean, that's really a, a scientific proof. In other words, there is a basic understanding in language. Certain languages is clear what it says. Certain language can be ambivalent. A term can be ambivalent, can mean two things. And other forms of language, it's, it's impossible to say that what it means, except if you, without some sort of dochek, uh, without pushing it into the language. So he says, look, my second proof is what we call Arayami Sateva. Read what the Rambam said. The Rambam said, quote, so the second proof that I have is from the uh, uh, Rama's language. Okay? Now, and he adds an important phrase here, and I made it in red. This is the law. It has nothing to do with what the mazik wants or not. We tell the mazik, we are in gold. The basin says to the mazik, you must pay the metatlon if you have it. 
We don't ask you what you want. We don't ask the Nizak what he would prefer, which was all sorts of variations, by the way, that people were saying, like the like the like the Beis Yosef, you know, the Nizak has a right to demand and all. He says no, and then there's no what the Nizak wants here. It's what the Mazik must uh, give, and that's a din and based in the based in kasha based in this guy. When the based in gives a pasak, it says to the Mazik, you must give. Notice how he pushed in caffeine inlay now, you see? Now you'll understand why he said caffeine inlay. We, the base, then force the mazik to give. We don't ask, well, what would the Nizak want? What the matter? Forget about it. We force the mazik to give, and that's his position. So he's already, he's already placing his position into the text. And he says, what the Rambam says in black and white, that the base, then, is government out on the chilet, a din Torah. And don't start giving me any types of akimtas, it's what the Nizik wants, it's what the Mazik wants, the Mazik's not around. Read what it says, what it says, what it means. That's it. So that's the second proof. Okay? Now he brings what we call, the Ramchal has three types of proof, what we call Araya Mitzat Teva. That means either the nature of language here or the nature of, uh, of uh, physical perception tells you. The second one was Araya Mitzat Kabbalah, which means an authoritative source says it. And the third one is Araya Mitzat Hekish, which is a, 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 a proof through a syllogism. And we have, Ramchal explains, five different types of syllogisms. But here, we're going to make a proof through syllogism. What we're going to say is if we look at the Rambam, a subsequent case in the Rambam, it will prove our case in Nazikin. How is it going to do it? Let's see. So he says the Rambam writes right after our case of uh, the based in Govin, uh, he says the following, Ve'im uh, mace, if the poor mazik dies, v'hanich metatl and v'karka, and he leaves just metatl and v'karka. The Ramah, for some reason, always leaves out kesev. I don't know why, but I think it's because kesev is equal to metatl, so he writes the big Kiddush, but that's an interesting observation. Anyway, if the dead mazik dies and has metatl and karka, he says, govin mehayasamen mikarka. In that case, you don't take the metatl in, you take the karka. Okay, uh, and the tour brings that halacha also. Now, here is the logical proof that the shach brings. The im ista the mestama nichle lamazik tve liten metatlan. If you're correct, uh, sma, and you say that the base in always has to put itself in the shoes of the mazik and decide what the mazik would have given, and that becomes the halacha. So then how come here the Basin doesn't say this poor Mazik is dead? If he was alive, what would he have given? He would have given metaltolin. So the din is we should also give metaltolin to the Nizak. Yet we see that's not true. So this is a called a disproof of the Okimta of the theory of the Sma. The Sma's theory was that the we're dealing here that the Basin is talking about a case where the Mazik is not around and it has to decide what to give. And the shach is bringing a proof that that can't be because the next halacha is when the man's not around. Well, he's dead. And we don't say that. So you can't hold that position. Okay? Now, this is one of the... the so if you're going I, to... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So yeah. can I, I, just, I think I have an important... Uh, okay, no problem. problem. Take a break. And, and I, I'm also... It, 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 just, just for five... <laughs> sorry, about that, just a bit of... Uh, this, this is the least favorite part of my job, is the really administrative stuff, you know, schedules and things like that. <laughs> right. Oh, one second. Now I'm just getting a call. Oh, yeah. Just, okay. Oh, just one second. Oh. Oh. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm teaching now, so uh, yes, everything is fine. Goodbye. Housing administration. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this is why it's better to learn at night. Yes. There's less, uh, right? Or very early in the morning. That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Baruch Hashem. So here, uh, when we're looking at the arguments presented by the Shah, this argument is called an argument through Hekish, through analogy, and it's called an argument ad absurdum. Okay, it's actually going to disprove the sma because the statement of the sma is that the basin decides what's best for the mazik, 
and that's what the Rambam is talking about. <clears throat> so the proof ad absurdum is, well, if that's true, then the next case, both quoted in the Rambam and the Tur, the based in, according to you, should decide what's best for the Mazek, which means give him a Tartalin, and it doesn't. Okay? So that's called a ad absurdum argument. Okay, I take your position, which is that the based in always defends, or, or always decides what's best for the Mazek when he's not around, and I show you that that would lead to a conclusion which is absurd because it goes against what both the Ramam and the Tour say. All right. Now, the way to get out of an argument out of absurdum is to show that that's a different case, right? There's a different reason why that's happening, okay? So you can't bring this case as a proof that my argument would not follow. But that will be, again, the work of the uh, next 600 years, okay? <laughs> All right. But uh, what's, what's very important now, what I'm trying to do also is since we really didn't do all those Ram Khalba, but the problem with doing theory all the time uh, is that the theory remains theory and the on hand situation uh, remains on hands. In other words, as we said about Rob Brody, I mean, you, you, you do things naturally and you never get back to what you're doing um, abstractly. <clears throat> or you deal in the abstract world, you never get back down into the practical reality. So what I'm trying to do here also is integrate both things. I'm trying to show you how using the Ramchal, you're able to analyze what the Shach is doing very, very critically, I mean carefully, and then you're all, you're also, you also know what you have to do to remove this argument. Okay, And we're going to see that that's exactly what people will be doing with this evidence that's being presented. Uh, very interesting enough, the strongest evidence he has is a clear statement of the Namuk Yosef, correct? That's his first evidence, and that's the strongest one. And we said, bring your strongest evidence first. So he definitely has a clear statement of Namuk Yosef and claim authority. Uh, the second uh, proof he had was from the simple meaning of the Rambam. It's not, it's not very odd to say that that's what it means, and, and therefore your interpretations are all um, based on reading into the Rambam something that he didn't say simply. That's the second proof. The third one, we said, is proof through logic, um, <clears throat> which means I show you ad absurdum. If what you're saying is true, it should be found in the case of Yisomim, and it's not. So therefore, your thesis that the Basin always does the best for the Mazik when he's not around is not true. Okay. Can I ask you, there's a question yes. here that have, um, has been developing here in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, I Initially, uh, the point that, that the Shah is trying to make here against the Sma, I thought was simply that that the Rambam is putting, metal, uh, is putting a Karka last. Correct. Metal, and then, again, when I say Karka last, how I presented it, or Metal for Karka. I don't know if there's an Afghan in yes, saying so, it well, in two ways. Well, but okay, let's say Metaltalin, uh, Karka last and Metaltalin before Karka. Right. Well, for the sake of argument, just for simplicity's sake, let's just say Metaltalin and Kesef are, are basically the same in the Correct. Rambam's sense. Correct. So, so we're just, that's what he's establishing, the, the order here of preference of Metaltalin over Karka, right? Correct. Now, but, it's, but what's interesting is that in his actual rayas, the three rayas that you bring here, um, implicitly in the first one and then very explicitly in the, in the second two, the issue, I mean, it's not, that he's not, it's not that he's not making that point that I just mentioned. He is trying to make that. But the issue that's really bothering him is, is that of on, on whose authority is, are we saying that, uh, that Metaltalin comes second? Sorry, that, that Karka comes second, Metaltalin comes first. Is it the Ratzon of the Mazik? I, and I know, of course, this was a big issue beforehand. This was one of the big debated issues. Is the Mazik have the upper hand of the Nizak? Mm -hmm. So here he seems to, he's very busy attacking this idea that, that there's any question of somebody having the upper hand, specifically the Mazik here, and that it's really just a din that is uh, objective and there's no subjective input here and that they, the Besdin simply has to enforce. So you see what, it, what I mean? It's, there's, the focus is a little bit different. It's not on the actual judgment itself. It's not on the actual sentence or the conclusion that, that Karka comes second, but rather about who is the authority to make that judgment. Well, I, I would say both things are true. 
he's not clear uh, because the second thing about the 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 uh, the ratzon or not ratzon is something that I would say I don't know in common language he slipped into us. I mean, you know, I mean, the, in other words, there's two problems here. Do you do you say that there's a precedent of a metalphone over karka? That's one problem. And then is it a din or is it a rutzon of the parties? That's the second problem. Both those problems exist. He is, as you say, ex he, his explicit evidence puts metalphon over karka. And he has pushed in the idea that that's a din. Okay? So uh, both those things exist. Both things uh, have to be proven. Um, <laughs> The first one, he, at least, he has explicit uh, proof that it's not so from the Ramah. The second one about it being a din or not is something that he says comes from the simple language of the Rambam. That's what he says here. Okay, but both of those things are th those things are both here. It's just one is exp one is. Yeah. <clears throat> no one spoke about the second issue so much. Oh, it's not true. I mean, the 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 Beis Yosef said that the that. We're dealing here with the Ratzon of the Maz, or the Ratzon of the Nizak, I'm sorry. Right? right? He can he can reject. Now he is implanting in us the idea that that's not true. So he's reading uh, the Beis Yosef on a point here, if you're very careful in his analysis. Mm -hmm. You see? So the question is, well, why is he doing that? Now, <clears throat> I believe that that may be come clear to us when we when we see his whole argument you say well he, the, the, he, the first thing it seems to me like I'm just uh, you know it seems to me that the, the, the main thing that that is attacking implicitly is the comparison with the um, Lov and Malva case right because there we, we, the, the Nizak uh, like the Malva is given a bit of an upper hand and that's that the, the whole basis of the comparison seems to be on that point well, that is another interesting issue that you present. Is it the up end or is it the din? That's is an interesting kakir. Is it the law or is it called the upper hand? Do we say to the Niza, uh, do we say to the Malva, what would you prefer? Or do we say to the to the, uh, the person who borrowed the money, you must give him money now if you have it? That's it. That's that really is part of the issue that we're going to have to clarify here. Okay, I see. Okay, so just to get back to this, then I, I, the the reason I'm noticing this is because I would have thought if he just wanted a clear the the, the statement from the Rambam to me it seems very clear. Govin hametaltalin techila. So he could have just brought that in, just left it at that. That's if that's his old his only point is hametaltalin is techila. And the karka is uh, afterwards. He could have just rested content with that. So he seems to be bringing in a lot of guns here. Um, I agree with you. That's why I put this in red. Yeah. That's why this is in red. He hasn't proven that point yet. He just made a statement that that's simply what the Ram Mama is saying. Remember, well, Ram Khal. Ram Khal. Statement right. and proof. Yeah. Statement and proof. Well, Raya number three, Raya number three seems to go in that direction. That's the whole power of Raya number three here. Is he's saying, look, we have another case which, which goes very much in a different direction, which proves that it's nothing to do here with, you know, who who wants what, but it's a question of just din. Oh, very good. Right. I mean, it's all, very good. It very good. The whole per the whole per that's the whole purpose of Raya number three is to make the, make that point. Um, well, it, again, it makes two points. It makes one point that there is, well, uh, no, maybe that's exactly the point that you're saying. Uh, let me just think about that. Because here, the base then is not, well, there's two points here. Here we have a case where the mazik is not around, which was the yakimta of the sma in the Rambam. Okay, and two, it's not a, we, we're not asking the Masik, he's not around. <laughs> it's a did. So we actually, again, we have both these points. Uh, uh, there's two points here that are, that are, uh, uh, um, are being 
proved or disproved. One, that when the mazik's not around, the based in determines what the mazik would have said, as if it was, like you said, the rut son of the mazik. And, and uh, one second, that's very interesting. Let, let, me, let me back off, back up again. Remember the rush. The rush said, you have all three, all, the mazik has all three alternatives, right? He can give kesev, shavik kesev, and metav. So there is maybe the beginning of talking about Ratzon Amazik. In other words, the, 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 the Mazik has a free hand to give what he wants. The Nizak cannot say, I want one thing over the other. Or the Basin can't say, or, or the Basin can't impose on the Mazik to give one thing over the other. So that maybe is our side point. That's whenever you talk about the Ratzon of the Mazik, you're talking about his ability to give all three equally. Once you start making hierarchy, we have now the associated question. Is that hierarchy a function of what the aggrieved party wants, or is it a din and based in? But that only comes in when we start talking about hierarchy, because we want to send where does that hier how does that hierarchy work? And you, you understand what I'm saying. So, so that's a, that's a, that's a, th these two issues are associated. The minute you go to hierarchy, then you have the associated uh, issue of whether that's a din or a ratzon of the parties involved. That's the second issue. So uh, those two, now that, that's, we have to think about that a little. It's not so simple. But he is definitely he is definitely coming down on the side where it's a din. There's no, this hierarchy is a, uh, it has nothing to do with the Ratzon or the Mazik or the Nizak. It's a, it's, it's a din. Why he wants to say that, he hasn't proven it. Okay. Uh, well, he says that's what the Rambam says, that's the Pashtus of the Rambam. Right? That it's a, it's a din. It has nothing to do, uh, uh, maybe again, I'm just thinking out loud. Because the Sma wants to push the rush into the Rambam, which is a question of Ratzon of the Mazik, and to say this is a special case where the Mazik's not around and therefore the base thing is considering the Ratzon of the Mazik. Okay, so that's what he wants to eliminate and says, well, it has nothing to do with the Ratzon of the Mazik. Once you get into hierarchy, then we have to throw out this idea of the Ratzon of the Mazik. And we have to say that's the Din. Now, I'm saying that I'm speaking out loud because, remember, we're going to have a combination case here. We're going to have Kesev and Metaltalin. They're learning that is the Ratzon of the Masik, except for the Ramah with the hay. In other words, the Masik can decide to give between Kesev and Metaltalin. That much he does have. But he must give both of those first if he has them. So it's it's interesting what what you're saying here. We're going to have to analyze this very carefully. What do? Why did we all of a sudden talk about caffeine and lay? What are we gaining? And what is the? You know, why did it come in here? It's definitely an issue, and he's pushing it in here, and we have to understand the import of that. But both these problems are things that we're going to have to uh, handle. One, hierarchy. In other words, if I don't have hierarchy, I say all three items are equal, then it's Ratzon Amazik. Okay. But once I start talking about hierarchy, then I want to know, well, is that a hierarchy based on Ratzon or Din? And he comes down on the because side. It's, I guess because it's, right, because if, it, if it's based, as so long as it's based on Ratzon, they can, it's, it's vulnerable to being changed. It's not a firm hierarchy, because the Ratzon could be otherwise. Right. But again, I, we hasn't bring, he hasn't bring evidence here. I, his only evidence is that that's simply what the Rambam says. Rambam doesn't mention anything about Ratzon of the, of the Mazik or the Basin is trying to figure out the Ratzon of the Mazik. That's all pushed in by the Sma. So he wants the simple meaning of the Rambam. The Rambam is talking legalistically. That is the din. We don't ask the mazik, we don't ask the nizak. That's what the din is. We look at what he has and we take it away. That's all. Okay. Uh, 
but let's leave that a little until we become more educated as to why the Shach is pushing this, because this runs, uh, as we said, a little counter to the tour, to the base Yosef in the tour. The base Yosef in the tour said, we're talking about a case where, if you remember, the, the, in the tour, the base Yosef said, we're talking about a case where the Mazik wants to give Metaltalin, and the Nizak is yelling, no, I want Karka. And the tour is saying that the let's go back to the tour. Sorry. Let's go to the base Yosef. Okay. This is a quote. So he says. So he's learning. No, okay. What's in Prius Balchov? If you have metaltalin and karka, kafinin lay. He used the word kafinin lay in the mace of lay metaltalin. We force the creditor to give metaltalin. Im chafetz behem hamal v'yotem ikarka. Careful. Let's let's read what he says here. In the case of loans. If the Malva desires metaltalin more than Karka, then, then the Bastin says we listen to the Ratzon of the Malva and we give and uh, we tell the 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 Lova he must give metaltalin. That's what the Rush said when it came to Malva, but he also added because he gave us he has a right to that. But here, the tour, the, the Beis Yosef says, V'dim redenu priyas balchov, priyas nazikin le priyas balchov. This is the Beis Yosef talking. Rabbeinu, the tour, made an analogy between paying a balchov, where there is a, um, we listen to the aggrieved party as to what he wants, to the case of nazikin. Even though there's a difference, but that's what he did. So let's go. Let's 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 again. This is the what we're talking about over here. This critical point here. Let's let's be a little clearer here. Okay, we're making an analogy between the Balchov and the Zikin. So we're reading the tour to say that just like in Balchov, the Malva has a right to demand. Metaltalin over Karka. It's not a din and base din. It we say to the Malva, what would you like? The Lova wants to give Karka. Do you want to accept it? We say no, I want Yashiv. So we're at the rut zone of the Malva and we're asking the Malva, we're not giving we're not telling the we're not telling the Lova what to do. It's not caffeine and light. We're not saying to we're not saying to the Lova, you must give Kesev or Metaltalin if you have it. We turn, we ask the Lovo, what would you give? What would you like to give? He says, you know something, I want to give him Karka. So at that point, we turn to the Malva and say, would you, would you like to accept the Karka? The Malva says, no, I don't want it. I want Kesev or Metaltalin. At that point, the Bethan comes in and says, well, you got it. You, the, the Lovo, must give him Metaltalin or Kesev if you have. So that's the scenario that the Beis Yosef sets up in Balchov, and he says that the tour has imported that scenario into Nazikin, which means if the Mazik says, you know something, I want to give you Metav Karka, we turn to the Nizak and says, well, do you want to accept Metav Karka? So the Nizak says, Metav Karka, I don't want Metav Karka, I want Kesev Metav, give me one Kesev Metav so we then turn to the Mazik and we say, you have to give him Kesev and Metaltalin because that's the run of the Nizak. So it's not a, a the Kafi of the Basin is only after we look at the Ratzon of the aggrieved party, correct? Are you with me? Yeah. Now that is not what the Shach is saying. The Shach is, says cl very clearly, The Shach says very clearly, 
הדין כך הוא ואינו תלוי ברצון המזיק או הנזק. There's definitely no ruts in a mazik here, but also we don't ask the nizak what he wants. We just turn to the mazik and we say, you got metaltalin and karka, give metaltalin. We don't say to the, we don't say to the nizak, well, you know, what would you like? He wants to give you, uh, you yeah. know. Can you, sorry, can I ask you to just scroll up just to see the sma again? I mean, not the whole, not the sma original, but just the quote, just scroll up to the, yeah. I'm just losing track of, what is he arguing with on the SMA here? What's the point, exact point? Okay, this is what we have to get to. Uh, we have yad HaMazik Al Yoyna. Exactly. Yad HaMazik Al Yoyna. And in order to keep Yad HaMazik Al Yoyna, we have to read the words of Go and Metatum Lechatchila as a case where the, the Mazik is not around. In other words, we had to go out of the pashtus of the language to get our din of Mazak al Yona. What did I mean? All of a sudden, the Rambam is talking about when the Mazak is not around. There's no indication of that when, in the words of the Rambam. The Rambam says when the base din has to collect, it's govan me mitatlin latchil. It says nothing to the Mazak. Where do you see the Mazak is not around? Let the Rambam write it. He knows how to write. How come he didn't say such an important principle? But in terms of, I'm just trying to think here, how, this, how does that affect the din? In, in, just a quotation here from the Sma still leaves us with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, with the, with the mazik. Yes, that means the mazik decides. The yeah. mazik is going to decide. Oh, yeah, yeah, what happened to my screen here? The so mazik oh. can decide how to pay. He exactly. Can pay with karka, in other words. He can pay with karka. Exactly. Exactly. He can put karka if he wants, 100%. Exactly. And there's no hierarchy of metatlon over karka, 100%. Okay. That means it's rutzon of the mazik, right? Right. Is, um, does anybody make the case that Lafid Hadin, not Lafid Ratzon Amazik, or anybody's Ratzon, that you have to pay Karka, that's not even considered here, that option, right? Just running the only, it seems like the, right now, the only, I, I, you know, I've lost track of all the arguments we've had. No, no, that's fine. No. So, it, 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 is the only opposition to the position that, that the Karka comes second, the only opposition to that is an argument, in other words, the, the opposition to it, it makes it the alliance what, that Karka what, could come what first. What did Rev Huna say? Remember what Rev Huna said? Uh, Karka and Kesef. No. Uh, and they asked him, what do you, exactly. Yeah. Right, so this, okay. So this is going to fly in the face of Rev Huna. If you're going to learn the, the not not the, not the 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 sma will say well the halakha is not like Rav Huna, it's like Rav Papa all three are equal, fine it's the rutzen of the mazik, fine. But if you're going to say hierarchy, you're going to have to appeal to Rav Huna, but Rav Huna's hierarchy is the wrong hierarchy. So you're going to have to now. He puts Karka first though. As... Exactly, Karka and Kesev are equal. He puts Karka first, not second. Yeah. Well, not last. So Which would if, go with the Yad HaMazik al No, is not what he's... Well, yes, it's on the Yad HaMazik al yes. But what, what's worse is, no, it's not exactly a Yad HaMazik al The Mazik only has a partial Yad al He can give Kesev or Karka, but he yeah. cannot give Metav, according to Rav Huna. Excuse me, I, I said that wrong. He has to give kekas or metav, and he cannot give metaltalin. Right. That's the simple way we were reading. So if you're going to go down this path, you're going to have to reread Rav Huna. Is, is the, the, the Sma is not, obviously, he's not holding with Rav Huna. He's holding with Rav Papa, that you can give either one of the three. Anyway. Rav Papa holds his no hierarchy. That's a simple way of understanding Rav Papa, mm -hmm. right? 
The only one that mentioned hierarchy was Rev Huna, and the hierarchy is the wrong way around. Right. So the halakhas is like Rev Papa, and there is no hierarchy, and that means the Mazda can decide what he wants. Now you have a problem, because the Rambam does talk about hierarchy. Govin Mimitatla. And not only does he talk about hierarchy, it's a, it's a inverted hierarchy that we never saw. Right. The, now we're right. getting involved in what the problems are. Right. So in other words, the Rambam, the Rambam is taking a strong, and this was, this is, the whole thing depended on his splitting off Kesef from the Taltman. Right, and in other words, that the, the machloket bet, uh, between Rav Huna and Rav Papa was a, was a two-part machlokas. It wasn't they weren't it wasn't a wholesale machlokas. Okay, now you're getting so, into what, 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 now which side do you want to support now? You want what really? Want, want to, oh, you just want to get your bearings. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just want to get my. He, uh, the Rambam is basically saying he's di he's taking a very strong stance against Rav Huna because Rav right. Huna is, is putting Kark on the bottom. So, but in order to no, 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 again, 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 he's Rav Kuhn, It depends on how you hold Rav Huna. Rav Huna is putting metaltalin on the bottom. Sorry, metaltalin. Thank you. Yes, he's putting metaltalin on the bottom, and the Rambam wants to put on top metaltalin chatchila. That's correct. So, so he, so he's taking a strong stance against Rav Huna because he wants to make, he wants to open the door to to metaltalin. Now, the weakness. The, the 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 problem with doing that is that they actually, ironically, Rav Papa opens the door or leaves the door open to allow allow Rav Huna in because he says, well, everything's equal, everything you play whatever you want, which allows uh, which allows Karka to to sorry to allows the you will. Which, what was I going to say? It's not you want to say that it allows it, yeah. it, it makes Kark on a, on a, on par with I mean, the other two, right, makes, but but you lost your hierarchy. Right. So it makes it puts Kesef and Kark on equal footing with Metaltalin. Right. And, but and now so you don't have a hierarchy. Right. right. So in order now, so the Shach comes in and it, it, in order to defend the Rambam, or that's what his version. I mean, he's assuming he's got the Rambam right. So he says, look, the first thing we have to knock out. Is this weak point in Rav Papa's way of looking at things, which is which which is which considers which allows for consideration of the Ratzon of the Mazik. We have to elim eliminate the whole Ratzon issue, which the Sma exploits in Rav Papa, right. in order to make sure sure that Rav Huna doesn't have the conclusion he wants. No, no, that's 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 a little too fast. We definitely have to get rid of Rav Papa because we, Rav Papa is going to have a rut zone of the mazik. That we have to get rid of. That, right, but the reason we have to get rid of it is because it makes an, it allows Rav Huna to come through the back door. That's that's the problem. Well, no, I think there's only two. When you when, when you're reading a, when you when you when you pesach halacha, you can only do it on the basis of the evidence in the Gemara. There's only two positions in the Gemara. There's only Rav Papa and Rav Huna. You yeah, can't. Yeah, you can't. I'm, so make up your I'm mind. Saying, I'm saying, no, I'm saying that Rav, Rav Huna. Let's let's think about what Rav Huna has on top, not on the bottom. He has Kesef and 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 uh, sorry, Kesef and Karka on the top. Right? Correct. So the Rambam wants to push Karka to the bottom. Correct. Now the pro, the thing, what is what is standing in his way, just in, in terms of the argument. So what I'm saying is that ironically, this is the irony here. What's standing in in the way is Rav Papa. Even though that's not Rav Papa's position, he wants to he wants to get rid of Rav Huna, but because Rav Papa is flattening him and putting all three on par with each other, so he actually allows uh, Karka to come to the top, to to bubble up to the surface and to be on par with with Mitaltala, which is what the Rambo would like to eliminate at least a point exactly. Of reading by the, by the, by no, the you're right. You're right. That's right. So. It's, Right, so so in order for the Shach to make room for his strong reading of the Rambam, which which, which is that he definitely wants to eliminate Rav Huna's position that that Karka can bubble up to the surface, so so the first thing he has to attack is the weak point in Rav Papa, not Rav Huna, but Rav Papa's allowance because Rav Papa allows because he flattens them all out, he allows Ratzon to be the arbitrating force between the three. So he has to say, no, forget about arbitration. There's no there is no Ratzon here. There is no equality because there's no Ratzon. Right. That's that's that seems to be. Um, the first point yeah, I, I, it's a little. It's it's a little bit. 
it's a little bit more it's a little bit more subtle than that let's let's just take this reading of the riff okay let's just start with the reading of the riff okay you have Rav Papa that flattens everything out Metav, Kesev and Metaltalin correct? Right. you have Rav Huna that you have Kesev and Metav and if you don't have Kesev then you have Metaltalin right? Right. right? now both these issues in other words if I look at the I, I shouldn't say that if I look at the Rambam, he doesn't fit in with Reb Papa, and he doesn't fit in Reb Huna. He doesn't fit in Reb Papa because the Rambam is going to say that Metav is the last alternative. He doesn't fit in Reb Huna because Reb Huna says Metav is, the, is an equal alternative. So the Rambam has no, no uh, authority to stand on. Now, as far as the issue of Ratzon, that's a little more subtle of an issue because the the Rapapa will tell you the Mazak has the Ratzon to do all three. And Rav Huna will tell you he has the Ratzon to side between Kesev and Metav, but not Metaltalin. So it's it's not an exactly Ratzon, low Ratzon move over here. Simply, mm -hmm. if you look at it, Rapapa gives the Ratzon to the Mazak to decide between all three equally. And Rev Huna limits that Ratzon to Kesev and Metav. And it says, but if you try to give him a Tatlin, you cannot. Okay? I see. Yeah. Now, these two scenarios are not the Rambam. If you're going to read the Rambam literally, then he's not going to fit in here. Right. Okay. I over yeah I overlook the fact that that even Rav Huna there's a question of Ratzon. Yes, exactly. That's there's a question. little bit of a question of Ratzon between Kesem and Meitav. Yes. Right. Now, that's why I wrote over here in the Rambam. What we're going to have to do is create a uh, this this situation. If you see my, we're going to have to create this situation in the Rambam where Meitav is last. So the way that the Beis Yosef does it is to appeal to, well, let me see if I can get that nice, I don't know if it's going to be big, small. The way the Beis Yosef does it is to appeal to Balchov. But that's not going to be so simple because although you can make an analogy between Balchov and Zin, you are then going to be forced to, to put this Balchov scenario into our machlokas between Reb Papa and Reb Huna. Correct? It's very nice that you want to put the Balf, Bal, you want to make an analogy between the Zikin and Balchov. That's very nice. No problem. But now you're going to have to read our Reb Papa and Reb Huna. And there's going to be two different ways of doing it. Let me see if I can throw that at you now. One way to do it is to reread Reb Papa, and that's really what the Namuki Yosef did. The Namuki Yosef said that Reb Papa told us that call mile mate call mile meitav hu the im lo mizdaven hachem mizdaven b'masachrisa. That means metaltalin is like money because you'll always get your money. Bar me hara, where the Torah said meitav. So the Nemuchi Yosef said, hey, you know, the Rambam got his halacha from the way he read pa Reb Papa. Since in the background we had Balchov, which has a precedent over, um, uh, of Kesev and Metathlon over Karka, right? The Gemara knew that, and Reb Papa knew that, and that's exactly what Reb Papa was saying, that Kesev, that metalton is equal to Kesev because you'll get your Kesev right away, but land is not, and the Torah admitted it when you don't have it. That's how the Nemuchi Yosef put the Rambam in the Gemara. That is not what the Shach is going to do. The Shach is going to take this Rambam, and where is he going to put him? Oops, I'm sorry. He's going to put him with Rapuna. 
That's what he's going to do. But, but not as a final besides. Very good. That's correct. He's going to make a combination, right? Ooh. He's going to re, 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 re you're right, 100%. He's really going to end up ba making him like Rev Papa, but not the simple way of, of, of the, of the Namuki Yosef, which was to say that whatever's closer to Kesef, that's what you put. You're right. He made a combination. He said, what did Rev Huna say? He said, Kesev, look what he's going to do. I'm going to make my little chart here. He's going to say, oh, let's get rid of this. He's going to say, O Kesev, Mitav, meaning Mitav is given when you don't have Kesev. Rev Nachman's going to ask him, well, what do you do with Yashiv? He's going to say that's when you don't have metaltalin. Hmm. Now, that's what Rav Huna is going to say, right? So in other words, we ended up with the, with the position of the Ramah, which we have three, uh, a triple hierarchy, right? That's the Ramah. First Kesev, then metaltalin, then Meitav. And he did that by making this L'chathchila B'diyahor, correct? But then that's not the Rambam because the Rambam they want to, he wants to say is Kesev is equal to Metatalin. How is he going to get that? Very good. Now we'll now we'll look at Rep. When Rep. Papa said Metatalin, he didn't talk about Kesev, but Rep. Papa holds that Kesev and Metatalin are equal, and land is always a poor second best. So we're going to end up with this. Even though he didn't te talk about Metatl, a Kesev, we understand by what he said, not like the Rama, not like the Rama. The Rama said, once you make a distinction between Metatlin and Metav and says, and say that Metatlin is easier to get money than Metav, then, then you're going to have to say that, that, that Kesev itself is even better because that's the real thing. Remember that? You with me on that? Yeah. Right? Comes along the Shah, he's going to say, well, I'm sorry, my dear friend. That was very good for the Ramah. But the, the, the Muki Yosef said that Kesev is equal to Metatalin. Right? That's what he said in the Rambam. How did he get it? Because he said, no deal. The, the, the Reb Papa holds that Kesev and Metatalin are equal. Metav is the worst, and he's arguing with Rev Huna only about specifically that case of Metatalin. Whereas Rev Huna made a hierarchy, Rev Papa is saying, I agree with you as far as Metav is the worst, but when it comes to Metatalin, it's equal to and not less than Kesev. And there's the Rambam. So you're right, the, the, in the, in the, in, we have to reread Rev Huna. To say, O oh, Kesev or Metav means the Chatchila Bidi We have to then say, Rev, not when Rev Nachman said, uh, Metal, what do you do, Metal? And he says, when you don't have Kesev, but Bavadai Metav is the worst. Then we have to go back to Papa and say, well, does what, uh, what was Rev Papa arguing with Rev Huna? And say, well, he agreed with Metav, and the only argument he had was that Metatlin is equal to Kesev. Mm -hmm. And that's the Rambam, like Rav Papa. And that could even be what he says, Peshat and Namuk Yosef, as it could even be. It's true that Namuk Yosef said in Rav Papa, the Ramah said that what's ever closer to Kesev it has a precedent. But the Rambam doesn't hold that. The Rambam holds that the poor goof, the, the very machlokus between Rev Huna and Rev Papa is about the relationship of Metatalin to Kesev. Rev Huna is saying it's a drop less, and Rev Papa is saying it's equal. But they both agree that Metav is the worst. So the halacha in the Rambam is not like Rev Huna, you're right. It really is like Papa, but it came through a re- analysis of Rev Huna, 
Once we got Rav Huna into the hierarchy this way, we were able to make focus between him and Rav Papa based on the relative position of Matatl and Tekesev. I am not a magician, I'm a logician. <laughs> but it sure is magic. I mean the depth of, of the depth of the analysis is something that's quite impressive. Now, people will argue about it, yes and no, and uh, he'll bring support for this type of uh, of reading of the O, but you know, but at least he's created a a uh, a logical analysis will that will produce the Rambam's din and explain the machlokis between Rev Hun and Rev Papa and keep the Rambam with Rev Papa with the halachas like Rev. Remember the Rif said the halachas like Rev Papa because he's the Basroi, so he has the halacha like Rev Papa, and he's 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 done quite a nice piece of work. This all, yeah, you have to go. This all flying in the face of, of okay, very exciting, right? I'm sorry for myself here. No, 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 no okay. I'm but sorry this, for you. I'm sorry for me that I have to go. No, no, okay, look, you have to do. But can I know This is beautiful stuff. I mean, this is, this is what the, I love this read, this Rambo. <laughs> this is the Shach. I mean, you know, you have to have a great head to do a thing like this. Because then he's also going to not only say it, he's going to bring support, which is going to be a whole other world. But this is, this is a great mind. To create, to, to take the Rambam at face value and to explain the Machlokas Reb Papa and Reb Huna and the Rambam's holding like Reb Papa took a, a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant mind. Brilliant, brilliant. There's nothing more to say. Now, whether it's right or wrong, people will remember we have another 600 years to fight about it. But at least he created a construct that produces the Rambam in its simple meaning. Great. Okay, we'll stop here. Um, <laughs> to be continued. Okay. Motzi Shabbos is good? Motzi Shabbos, Vezret Hashem. Okay, we'll see yeah? you then. Okay. Yes, yes, have a great day. Okay. Right. Call, call to. Okay, have a good Shabbos. Good Shabbos.